Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we will start our last topic, which is value-added tax. This is last topic of ACC P6 taxation exam. So I told you in the previous lecture that please have a go at it. Uh, just read the value of tax yourself, excluding page 94 and 95. I assume that you have already read it. Reason I asked you uh, to read it yourself, it doesn't mean that we won't go, go through together now. Uh, we will obviously read together. But the reason I asked you is because if you read it yourself first, then we will go through together. Then you will understand the things in a better way because you have forgotten these things uh, because you have studied F6 long, long ago. You might be exempt from it as well. Uh, but still, we will go through together. So if you have already read it, that's perfectly fine. If you haven't read it, please make sure you read the value of tax yourself first from the notes, excluding page 94 and 95, uh, because it is new to you, so you won't understand it. Uh, however, the rest of the stuff is uh, you know, very, very easy, and it is the same thing which you have seen at uh, paper F6 uh, whenever you passed it. All right. So let's start the value of the tax now. If you haven't read it, please make sure you just pause the video and read it first, then come back to this lecture and you can watch it again. Right? So assuming that you have already read it, value of the tax. Now value of the tax is simply a, ta a type of tax which businesses charge on some supply of uh, you know, some goods or services. Now if I'm a, if I have a practicing firm in the UK, if I'm providing accountancy services, I might charge value to tax or I might, I, I might be exempt as well. We will see if we, will be, uh, if, we, if we can charge the tax or we can be exempt. All right. Likewise, if I'm doing a business, I will be charging some value to tax as well, depending on what I am selling. If I am selling exempt goods, then I won't be charging any value to tax. If I am selling the taxable goods, which are taxable for the value to tax purposes, then obviously I will be charging value to tax. And there is only one standard rate of value to tax which you will charge uh, at the rate of 20% for our current tax year uh, 1617. It was, you know, uh, it started from 10%, even 5% long, long ago, and then, you know, eventually it came to 20% now, and it is at the rate of 20% uh, from a couple of years. Uh, although they will increase in future years, uh, but for, for our context, the current tax year it is 20%. So in our exams as well, it, it is going to be uh, at the rate of 20%. Now, if I am a business, I will be charging value to tax when I am selling something. Now, although I am selling something and I am charging value to tax, but sometimes, basically not sometimes, most of the times, I will be buying some stuff as well. I will be buying some uh, purchases. I will be doing some purchases as well. Now, on them purchases, I will be incurring some value to tax as well because the person from whom I am buying the stuff will also be charging value to tax if he is registered, assuming that they are registered as well. Remember, uh, if I am registered for value to tax, only then I can charge value to tax. If I am not registered for value to tax, I won't be able to charge value added tax. So if I am selling, uh, if I have a petrol pump, say for example, most common thing. So if I have a petrol pump, uh, if you come to my you know, fuel station or for the petrol or the diesel, then you, know, you don't only pay for the fuel, but you also pay uh, value to tax as well. Now, I'm collecting that value to tax, but I am not keeping it in my own pocket. I will pay to HMRC. So you're not directly paying to uh, HMRC, you're paying me, and then I will pay uh, to HMRC. So it is indirect tax. So if I am uh, selling the petrol, so I am charging VAT, VAT on that. Now, in, in my this business, I might be buying some stuff as well. I might be doing some expenses, and on that as well, I might be charging. Uh, I might be incurring some value added tax. Now, there are two types of value added tax. One is on the sales, another one is on the purchases. So, if I'm selling something, I'm charging VAT. If I'm purchasing something, I'm incurring some VAT. So, there are two types of uh, taxes, value added taxes. Now, one which is on the sales is called output value tax, as you have read in the notes, and one which I am incurring on my purchases, it is called input value tax. While making my value tax returns, the tax return simply means um, it is just a documentation, it is not a payment. Now, tax payment and tax return is different things. Tax return is simply, as we have seen in our one of the previous videos as well, tax return simply means a detail of the calculation mentioned in the form, and you know, tax payment is 
actually you pay for the VAT or the, any other or any other tax as well. So while making the uh, you know tax return, I will write down output value of the tax, which is which I have charged on the sales. Then I will deduct uh, input VAT out of that, and the net amount, net VAT, is the amount which I will pay to HMRC, or if I have overpaid, and uh, then I will collect it from the HMRC because I have overpaid in taxation. So if it is uh, if sales um, VAT on the sales is in excess of the VAT on purchases, then I will pay to HMRC. If input VAT exceeds the output VAT, then I will claim from HMRC because I have overpaid the value tax. All right. Another thing as well, there are uh, three types of supplies uh, for, for our value added tax purposes. One is exempt supply. So exempt supply means that I, if I am doing, if I am selling that supply, if I'm supply simply means if I am selling that stuff. So if I am selling that stuff, then I won't charge any value tax because it is exempt. There is another supply which is standard rated supply. Now standard rated simply means that you have to charge VAT on that at the rate of standard, uh, standard rate, so which is 20%. So you will be selling that stuff and you will be charging VAT as well on that and that will be 20%. Now most of the time you will be seeing this stuff. Other one is uh, one is the uh, exempt one. Other one is a standard rate one, and the, uh, the last one is zero rated supply. Now, in the zero rated supply, although you will be charging uh, charging value added tax, but you will be charging value added tax at the rate of zero percent, right? Now, what does this zero percent comes from? Why why we need to calculate the VAT at the rate of zero percent? There is a difference. I will tell you in a minute. But there are three kinds of uh, supplies. One is zero rated. On which you will charge the uh, you will charge the VAT, but you will charge the VAT at the rate of zero percent. Now, other one is exempt supply, so you won't charge any VAT, and the last one is standard rated one, uh, on which you have to charge the VAT at the rate of uh, at the rate of standard um, standard percentage, which is twenty percent. Now, there is a certain limit. If your sales exceeds that limit, then you need to register for value to tax. If that if that uh, limit exceeds uh, exceeds so if your sales is in excess of eighty three thousand pounds say for example for our current tax year if sales exceeds eighty three thousand pounds then you will have to uh, you register for value tax you have to register for value tax now I am saying you have to but is it optional sometimes or not yes yeah, sometimes it is optional it is up to you as well. Now, say for example, if your sale does not exceed eighty-three thousand pounds, you still—I mean—you still can register for a valid tax if you want. But the question arises that why would someone want to register for valid tax? Say for example, if my sales is less than eighty-three thousand pounds, so by law I'm not required to register for valid tax. Why shall I register for valid tax? Is there any motivation? Will there be any benefit of registering for valid tax? Yeah, of course there is. Now the input VAT which I am incurring on my purchases, I can only claim from HMRC if I am registered for value tax. Now when I am registered for value tax, I will be making either standard rated supplies or zero rated supplies. Now it depends on what, what kind of business I am in, what I am selling. Now if I am standing, selling standard rated supplies, I can register for value tax. If I am selling zero rated supplies, I can still register for value tax. If I am selling exempt supplies, I can't register because I am selling exempt supplies. Now, when I register for value tax, of course, I will be able to charge value tax uh, either at the standard rate, <coughs> excuse me, or the zero rate, or the zero rate. All right. So now, the difference between exempt supply and the uh, zero rate supply is because in the exempt supplies. You can't register for valid tax, so you can't reclaim, you can't claim from HMRC the tax which you have paid on your purchases. Now, although my business, if my business is uh, dealing with exempt supplies, if I'm selling exempt supplies, I still might be incurring some input VAT on the purchases, right? So if I'm incurring some value tax on the purchases, then I can't reclaim it, I can't claim from HMRC uh, because I am exempt, I'm selling exempt stuff. Whereas on the other hand, if I am selling uh, standard rated supplies, so I'll be selling standard rated supplies and I can claim whatever I have paid on the purchases because I am registered for value tax. The third case, zero rated supplies. In zero rated supplies as well, I am selling 
zero rated supplies, I'm charging VAT at the rate of zero percent, which is nothing, but I am incurring some value tax on purchases. Now, if I am selling of zero rated supplies, I can register for value tax, so I can claim value added tax as well on the purchases. Now, that is the reason if my threshold, if my income is you know, below the threshold of 83,000 pounds, so if my, sorry, not income, if my turnover, my sales, uh, if my turnover is less than 83,000 pounds a year, uh, I will, you know, I might register for value or tax if it is beneficial for me. If I am t purchasing too much stuff and I'm pay paying too much on my purchases in, uh, you know, in shape of value or tax, then I might well register for value or tax so that I can save some tax, I can claim value or tax from HMRC. So in that case, I will be registering for value tax. Now, if I am a uh, zero rate supplies, if I am a supplier of zero rate goods, so I am not charging any value tax. I am not registered for value tax as well because my supplies are less than eighty three thousand pounds. So I am not registered for value tax. In that case as well, I might well consider registering myself as value rate supplies. Uh, sorry, value rate. Uh, uh, I might well consider registering for value tax because. I am not charging any VAT at all, but I am incurring some VAT so that I can save some tax. So that's why I will register for value tax. All right. So that is enough commentary, I think, for now. I'll just move to our notes so that we can read them together. Just give me one second. Uh, here you go. As you can see on your screen, value added tax, uh, page 90 of your lecture notes. Right. So it says VAT is charged on taxable supplies of goods and services uh, in the UK by a taxable person in the course of their business. Now there are three kinds of rates. One is a standard rate, which is 20%, which is on most goods and services, uh, and then, then is a zero rated. Uh, you will charge value tax, but you will charge at the rate of zero percent. And now the things on which you have to charge at the rate of zero percent is given on the right side. You can just read it yourself. Then there are a few things on which uh, you do not have to charge any VAT, which are exempt, so you can't charge any VAT at all. Now, recently introduced that there is a reduced rate of 5% on fuel things, so supply of fuel for domestic use and supply of services, uh, when you are supplying your services for the installation of equipment which saves energy, in that, in that case as well, uh, if you are charging any VAT, you will have to uh, you will have a reduced rate, which is uh, at the rate of five percent. All right. Now it will tell us in the question. There are only two things anyway: fuel for domestic use and supply of services for installing energy-saving material to home. So if it is one of them, then we will charge uh, VAT at the rate of uh, five percent. Now, how to calculate value tax? It's as uh, simple as that, as it, as it shows. We'll take output VAT, then we'll deduct input VAT. Output VAT is VAT on the sales. We'll deduct input VAT, which is on the purchases, and the net uh, VAT will be either payable or it will be receivable. Uh, then it says exempt supplier cannot recover input VAT, as I, sh uh, as I told you earlier, that if you're exempt supplier, you cannot recover input VAT. So that's what it says here as well. Uh, so if you're exempt supplier, you cannot recover uh, input VAT. Then it says a value of uh, the value of supply. Now, how to um, you know how to uh, calculate the value of supply? What is the value of supply basically? It's just you know the kiddish question. Uh, so, value of tax exclusive price uh, plus VAT. So the total consideration is going to be uh, you know uh, supply of the VAT. So that is the amount. Now, how to calculate VAT on that? Uh, I mean, how to calculate VAT? So the price will be given to you. You simply take 20% of that. That will be the VAT amount. However, if it gives you tax inclusive price, then how to calculate it? How to calculate the VAT? You know it. Uh, if it is at the rate of 20%, so it is going to be 20 over 120, and that is the way to calculate value tax. Now, for registration purposes, there are a few tests. Uh, if it is compulsory registration, so compulsory registration, which means that you are you are bound to register for value tax. So what is compulsory registration? There are a couple of tests. One is historic test. Historic simply means that the previous test. So we will look at previous 12 months. So that's what it says. Uh, registration is compulsory if at uh, end of any month, 
taxable supplies over the previous 12 months have exceeded 83,000 pounds, uh, then you are required to register for value tax. And in the future test, it says that a person is liable to register at any time and there is reasonable grounds to believe in uh, that his taxable supplies uh, will exceed 83,000 pounds in the following 30 days. So if uh, in the following, in the coming 30 days, if it exceeds the limit of 30, 000, uh, 83,000 pounds, then you'll, you are required to uh, register for value to tax. Voluntary registration, we know that you can register if you want to, and uh, only benefit is that you will be able to claim the uh, input VAT. Then there is group registration. Now, if you are doing few businesses, then you can register uh, all of them as group uh, registration. So you can, you, you can do one, only one registration for value to tax purposes. So you're doing one to three businesses and there will be only one you know, VAT registration. So, <coughs> excuse me. The benefit of this will be that there will be, there will be less administration, so there will be less hassle. So you're only required to submit one VAT return. You only have to make one single payment and you only have to, uh, you know, the, there, there will be a lot of simpli uh, you know, simplification in that because uh, everything will be simple. Uh, like if you, are, if you have three businesses and you are doing, uh, you, there are separate registration for all of them, then there will be, uh, you know, if you, are, if you are paying to your accountant, so you will be paying for three businesses because there will be three registration and your accountant is going to charge three times as well. Whereas there is only one uh, registration for your whole group, then obviously accountant will be doing less work and they will be charging less, uh, less uh, you know, service charges as well. Right, so we are thinking from the point of view of businessmen not uh, from our business as accountant. Right, so uh, companies under common control uh, may apply for group registration. Two or more companies are eligible to be treated as members of the group, provided each of them are established in the UK. Now, how can they you know, make the business if one company controls the other or one person controls both companies or if you uh, or uh, one person controls both of them companies or if there is one business and it controls uh, two other businesses as well so they can form a you know group for the value added tax purposes so that's what it says that one of them controls each other or one person or individual yes or individual or the company controls all of them or two or more persons carrying carrying on a business in partnership controls all of them so yeah, they can form the group registration. So what is going to be the benefit of that? Each VAT, um, each VAT group must uh, appoint a representative member. So what would happen is that if you form a group, then you will tell HMRC that it is, it is our representative member out of the group. So he will be responsible for submitting VAT return. He will be responsible for paying VAT. So we all will pay to him, then he will go and he will go to HMRC and pay all of the value added tax for all of the group, all right? Now, although he's representative member, but all of the group members will be liable separately and jointly for the value added tax liability for all of them, uh, for, for the whole group, for the whole group, all right? So each VAT uh, group must appoint a representative, a representative member who must account for the group uh, group's output VAT and input VAT, uh, thus uh, simplifying VAT accounting and allowing payments and repayments of VAT to be netted off. Uh, however, all members of the group are jointly and severally uh, liable for any value tax due from the representative member, as I said. Another benefit is that if you're valued, if you're, if you're, if you have the group, uh, and uh, you have done the a group registration for value tax purposes if one group member transfer goods to another group member they cannot charge the VAT so it will be disregarded for uh, value tax purposes the next benefit is that any supply of goods or services by a member of the group to another group member that's what I've just told you then it says any other supply of goods or services by or other group member is treated as supply to or by the representative member so what what it what does it mean is that if any of the group members 
makes any supply, then it will be considered as that representative member is doing the supply or purchasing the goods or whatever because he is only representative member. So if you have a group of five companies, you will represent one company as a representative member. Uh, so that will be responsible for that. Any VAT payable on import, uh, who will be responsible? A representative member again and they will pay. And it is up to you. Whenever you want to remove a company from the group or you want to add any company, you can do so any time of the year. It is totally up to you. When shall you register for, uh, when shall you, you de-register for value tax? And there are two things. One is compulsory, another one is voluntary. Uh, there is compulsory de-registration. So if HMRC is satisfied uh, that you do, do not make any uh, taxable supplies, then you are not required to uh, register for VAT. So you must, uh, uh, you must de-register for value tax immediately. Uh, then it says voluntary deregistration. Uh, a trader is eligible for deregistration if HMRC is satisfied that uh, it, your taxable supplies will not exceed eighty one thousand pounds in the following one year period. So if you make your, uh, if you write to HMRC and make them satisfy that your taxable supplies will not exceed eighty one thousand pounds in the following one year, then you may deregister for value tax if you want, but you must uh, you must satisfy HMRC. Now, if you deregister for value tax, what happens is that if you have any stock in, uh, if you have any stock in hand, on which you have claimed, on which first you have paid value tax and you have claimed from HMRC, then you will have to repay to HMRC uh, any uh, any input VAT which you have claimed. So that is the rule. So whenever you deregister for value tax, then all the input VAT uh, on the stocks will be paid to HMRC and also if you have any capital assets and you have uh, claimed any input VAT on capital assets that will also be paid to HMRC although there is an exemption of 1000 or less than that so if uh, input VAT claimed was less than 1000 pounds uh, then you are not required to pay back to HMRC so that's what it says consequences of deregistration you can read it yourself and then after that it says pre-registration input VAT now once you register for value tax, only then you can start charging VAT and only then you can claim value added tax which you are incurring on your purchases. But HMRC gives you some benefit. They say that if you're going to start a business and just before starting the business, you may be incurring some expenses because if I am going to start my company in two months period, uh, for them two months period, which I'm going to start the company in two months period, I may be doing some uh, you know, expenses now. I might have to pay to accountant, I might have to pay to solicitor, I might have to buy some machinery and all that, so I, I will be incurring some expenses. So what does HMRC say is that you can claim value tax incurred on the things purchased or the services supplied uh, uh, up to certain limit. So if you are going to start the business now, whatever expenses you have incurred before starting the business, you can claim input VAT on them, on both uh, goods and services. So that's what it says, pre-registration input VAT. So normally, a VAT incurred before registration cannot be accounted for as input VAT. If conditions below are satisfied, then you know you can claim it. So for the goods, it says that uh, the goods must be uh, acquired for business purposes and should not be sold or consumed prior to registration. So you must have the goods in, in hand in the, in the stock and they must, have, uh, they must not have been purchased uh, before four years. So the maximum you can do is uh, up to four years. So if you are going to start your business now and you have bought some stuff uh, four years ago, uh, that is the maximum you can claim input VAT uh, up until. However, the, for the services, it is just six months. So if you have uh, paid for the services uh, six months ago, <coughs> and you, can claim, <coughs> you can claim value tax on that. Right? Uh, next, it says uh, VAT period. Now, a VAT period, also known as tax period, is a period covered by the VAT return. Normally, it is three months period, which is quarterly. So VAT period will normally be three months period. So you will have to submit the VAT return, and you will have to pay VAT, uh, and, you know, VAT amount as well. Uh, so the date by which you have to pay VAT is one month and seven days. 
Um, it is a little odd date, but uh, you have to remember it. So VAT return must be submitted and VAT must be paid within one month uh, and seven days after the period. So VAT period is three months long and after three months you will have one month and seven days to pay value to tax and to submit, VAT, uh, submit the VAT return. All right. After that, it says that certain businesses may submit an annual VAT return under annual accounting scheme. Now, there are, there are few schemes, one of which is uh, annual accounting scheme uh, on page uh, 96 of your notes. Here it is, annual accounting scheme. Now, what happens is that you will have to uh, submit a VAT return uh, after every VAT period in normal cases. However, if you choose to um, go for annual accounting scheme, then you will have to submit only single VAT return. Now, who can join this scheme? Let's read from the notes. Annual accounting scheme is available whereby single VAT return is filled, uh, sorry, single VAT return is filed uh, for a 12 month period, normally the accounting pe uh, period. Uh, uh, the annual uh, return must be uh, filed within two months of, uh, of the end of the return period. So you will have two months in this case, whereas in the normal period was one month and seven days. Uh, normally nine payments will be made, which is 10% of the previous year's uh, tax liability. So you'll pay 10% uh, of the previous year's uh, you know, tax uh, VAT liability, and there'll be nine payments. So 10% multiplied by nine is equal to 90%. So you would have paid 90% of the previous, uh, VAT, previous year's VAT liability. Uh, and only 10% would remain, but the final payment is going to be the balancing amount. So by by that date, you will know your own uh, you know VAT liability for our current tax year. Then you will have to pay the remaining amount. Now the final payment is going to be the balancing payment, all right? So that's what it says. The annual uh, return must be filed within two months uh, of the end of the return period. Normally nine payments on account each calculated on 10% uh, of the previous year's net VAT liability are made at the end of the 4 to 12 months. So these are the periods on which you have to pay VAT. And these are the months. A balancing payment or repayment is made uh, when the return is filed. So when you re uh, file the return, you will have to pay or you will have to claim from HMRC if you have overpaid it. A trader can join the scheme if his uh, taxable uh, you know, turnover is one, less than 1.35 million. Uh, and you must leave this scheme if you exceed 1.65 million, uh, 1.6 million, sorry. Now this is an annual accounting scheme. Now what happens is normally uh, when you're charging VAT, uh, when you're charging VAT, you are charging VAT on the basis of uh, invoice. So whenever you issue the invoice, you have to, go, you have to charge VAT on that. And if you're purchasing something, obviously, if you're purchasing something, you, they have issued you the invoice, and on that invoice, you will pay the VAT as well, all right? Now say, for example, if I am selling something, right, but I'm not selling it on the cash basis because I have a huge business, so I am selling on cash and on credit as well. But I will be charging VAT on the basis of invoice issued rather than when they pay me cash, right? So it will be normally I will be issuing the invoices and I will be paying VAT on the, you know, I will be accounting for the VAT on the basis of invoices. However, there is one exception. If you choose cash accounting scheme, you won't do that. You will only uh, have to account for the VAT whenever the cash is paid. So that's what cash accounting scheme says. It says that according to this scheme, as you can see on your screen, uh, VAT is accounted for on the basis of cash receipts and payments rather than on the basis of invoices issued and received. So a traditional way of doing calculating or accounting for the VAT is whenever you issue a VAT invoice, you will have to account for the value tax at that time. Uh, however, in this scheme, cash accounting scheme, uh, what happens is that you only have to account for the VAT when you know, cash is paid or whenever cash is received. Now, if it is cash, if cash is involved, then obviously you will get automatically, uh, you will get the automatic bad debt relief because if you sold anything and customer does not pay you, then obviously if until he pays you, you can't, you know, you can't uh, pay VAT to HMRC.
So that's why it will give you automatic bad debt relief. If customer does not pay you, you don't have to pay to HMRC. However, in traditional way, what happens is that you issue the invoice, you will pay to HMRC until you, you won't wait for the customer to pay you back, right? So you issue the invoice, you have charge VAT on that, you will pay to HMRC, you don't wait for the customer to pay you, all right? So that is a normal way. If customer does not pay you in traditional ways, then you will, you, although you can claim it, you can claim the uh, bad debt relief, but you will have to pay and uh, you will have to wait for six months, you will see in a minute. Uh, we will see that in a minute as well uh, but in cash accounting scheme you will get automatic bad debt relief because if the customer does not pay you you don't have to pay to HMRC correct right? uh, the you know who, who can join this scheme taxable turn, turnover must not exceed 1.35 million and you must leave this scheme if it exceeds uh, 1.6 million pounds all right now, could you please tell me what is the standard rate of value tax? Now, standard rate of value tax, you write, is 20%. Now, I have to charge VAT on tax exclusive price. All right? I have to charge VAT on the tax exclusive price, and it is a rate of 20%. That is the normal standard rate. Now, there is one scheme. If you join that scheme, you might have to pay a reduced rate. You might have to pay a flat rate. A flat rate, and it depends on which industry you are business falls in it could be five percent it could be twelve percent so you know it, it varies it will tell you in the question if it examines the flat rate scheme now that scheme name is flat rate scheme now, if you join that scheme you will not be charging a vat at the rate of 20 percent however you will be charging vat at the rate of flat rate which will be given to you in the exam you'll be charging at the rate of flat uh, flat percentage now wh while charging the vat at the rate of flat percent flat percentage you will be charging on the amount which is tax inclusive all right so that inclusive price let's look at this scheme now which is a loss scheme a flat rate scheme so you'll take the sales which will be uh, the VAT inclusive price and you'll have to apply the uh, flat percentage on that and that will be the amount which will be paid to HMRC now that's what you have to do it is as simple as that you don't have to keep the records, you don't have to do output VAT, input VAT and all that. What you have to do is you will have to just take this flat percentage and apply that to a uh, sales price which is tax inclusive price and uh, that is the amount uh, which you pay to HMRC. Now in this case if you have already uh, observed that, that you cannot claim input VAT, it does not say anything that deduct the input VAT. So if it is not deducting any input VAT, it means that we cannot claim input VAT. Now we cannot claim input VAT under the flat rate scheme. That is one disadvantage. Another benefit is that if you are a you know if you are a new business and you have just joined the flat rate scheme, uh, in the first year you will get one percent reduction in the flat rate. So if the standard flat rate for your industry is twelve percent, you will have to pay at the rate of eleven percent in the first year. That is another benefit as well. But there is a certain limit if uh, who can join this scheme. Uh, if your taxable turnover is uh, up to £150,000, you can join. However, if it exceeds £230,000 or more than that, uh, if it exceeds the £230,000, obviously, you will have to leave this scheme. All right. So that was our flat rate scheme. Let's go back to our uh, you know notes where we were studying. We were studying... Uh, this page i think yep we were here that periods so this was the area by which uh, where i thought that i should go to the uh, annual accounting scheme and because it says uh, in on the screen as you can see it says that uh, certain businesses may submit an annual return right uh, annual return under the annual accounting scheme and it says see later that's why we went to our last page where we saw few schemes all right then it says refunds of overpaid VAT there are four years time limit on the right to claim uh, overpaid VAT so you have four years to claim an overpaid VAT if you have overpaid it and you do not claim until three years you still have one year left until you can uh, you know claim your overpaid value-added tax right uh, VAT records must be kept for six years uh, by a registered person and that is the requirement by HMRC 
Then it says uh, treatment of discount while incorporating, while calculating the value tax, you must uh, deduct the discount, then you can apply the value tax. Then after that it says relief for bad, let, bad debts. Now this is the thing which, uh, which is different from a uh, cash accounting scheme. Now under the cash accounting scheme, we will get automatic bad debt relief because it, it is on the cash basis. Now if you are not on the cash basis, you are on the invoice basis, then what would happen about the bad debts? That's what it says here. Normally that output is accounted for when an invoice is issued. Uh, if the sales become a bad debt and the seller has paid VAT to HMRC, then it can be recovered if at least six months has elapsed since payment from the debtor was due. Right? So that is the criteria. You must wait for six. Uh, you must wait for six months. <coughs> right. The next one is uh, land and building. A construction of new dwelling uh, and building and to be used for residential or charitable purposes is zero rated uh, and sales and lease of the land and building is exempt which is the last one and uh, yeah, sale of freehold however uh, sale of uh, freehold of a new commercial or the standard rated um, yeah, standard rated uh, property uh, is going to be at the rate of standard rate which is uh, 20 percent and also if it is construction of a commercial building it is also at the rate of uh, standard rate which is 20 percent again now when it says new commercial building uh, it means less than three years old so if it is less than three years old then you will have to apply at rate of uh, uh, 20 percent now uh, the last one which i've already mentioned you other sales and leases of land and building is exempt now other other assets and um, lease and sale of the land and building is exempt Although it is exempt, but if you want to, you can ask HMRC that I want to pay tax on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, although it is exempt, but uh, if you want to, you can uh, say to HMRC that I want to pay tax on that. Now, why would, you want to, why would you want to do that when something is exempt? Why would you go to HMRC and say, I want to pay tax on that? Now again, reason is because if you are exempt, then you won't be able to claim HMRCs and then you won't be able to claim input VAT from HMRC. However, if you are registered for value tax, then you can uh, claim value tax, input value tax uh, if you are registered for VAT. So that is the reason uh, if you want to register, you, uh, so if you want to pay the tax on the properties, uh, then you can do that uh, on, on land and building. Owners may elect to waive the exemption and to treat sales and lease of land in commercial buildings as taxable instead of exempt. The owner must be registered for value tax in order to make the election. Election replaces an exempt supply with a standard rigid one usually to enable the recovery of input fat. Right. Uh, next thing is a real estate election. Now what happens is that because sometimes if you are dealing with uh, lots of properties, you are, you are doing the business and you are dealing properties on the daily basis. That's where the real estate investment, sorry, real estate election will, uh, will be able to help you. A taxpayer may claim um, uh, a real estate election claim instead of the making uh, separate elections for each property they own. If a taxpayer make real estate election, they will be treated as having made the election for each property they acquire, although they may revoke the option on a particular property. So what happens is that, it, what does it mean is that uh, you don't have to tell HMRC that uh, if you hold too many properties, you won't go to HMRC to tell every time you want to pay tax on that property. If you have 10 properties, uh, you won't say that I want to pay tax on one property one. Then in next week, you will say to HMRC, I want to pay tax on that as well. So what does it mean is that you can simply say to HMRC that I want to pay tax on all of the properties. That's what it says, real estate election. Now the cooling off period, which it uh, states later, a cooling off, pay, uh, sorry, cooling off uh, provision. Uh, cooling off provision uh, simply means that uh, uh, you have too many properties, uh, although you will say to HMRC that I will pay tax on all of them. However, I will not pay tax on property nine. So that is, uh, you know, cooling off provision. So you will say to HMRC, I will want to pay, the, I want to pay the tax on all of them, excluding property, uh, that specific property. So uh, that is known as uh, a cooling off provision. A deduction of input VAT. You can only deduct input VAT if you have records, if you have invoices, and all that. 
uh, only then you can uh, you know deduct the input fat and you can claim from HMRC there are few non deductible input fat uh, the list is given to you please make sure you read read it it's uh, just uh, theory things on the next page which is uh, page 94 uh, we will study this in the next lecture page 94 and 95 is left so we'll uh, continue with value tax in the next video and we will see a couple of schemes capital goods scheme and partial exemption as well for value tax purposes so i'll see you in the next video and we'll continue with value tax thank you